Hello and welcome to the second video in my series putting iNav onto this thing here. This is the Recon 7 long range quad. Now unusually this is one of the few quads that are currently coming out that also have the additional sensors like a compass and barometer that iNav needs to order to work on it. So I'm taking the opportunity to make this little series and in the last video I actually installed iNav and we did the basic configuration. So if you haven't already watched that video go back and watch it. There's a link to the entire series in the description below. This time it's about doing the final checks and then going and doing the very first test flight. It's important to do a test flight with iNav to make sure that all that calibration that you did in the first video and all the final setup and pieces are working perfectly. A lot of pilots report issues with iNav and in my experience that's typically because they've missed out one of the steps or something hasn't quite worked properly. Compass calibration being out can cause some very odd behaviours and also making sure that you don't have a solid GPS lock before you arm and fly the model means that things like return to home won't work either. So let me jump onto the bench, let's go through the final pieces and get ready to go to the field. So here on the bench, there's a number of things that we need to do just to make sure we're absolutely ready to go out and fly. As I mentioned in the last video, that talked more about the calibration, some of the basic setups. This, we just need to make sure that everything is gonna work okay. Now, a big part of this is making sure the radio is set up properly. So I'm gonna turn my radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, install the Lua script onto this radio. I'll put a link down below to the video how to do that press page, that will show me all of the details of what's going on in the model. Incredibly useful for things like iNav because it will show me and tell me when things like the GPS lock has happened and it's ready to go. The other little tip is when you are doing this on the bench, uh, the GPS in this particular Recon 7 model is powered by the USB so I can see it's working okay. Some models need to be powered be very careful with that. I would always remove your props so nothing untoward happens. I'm not going to be supplying main power, so I'm happy to keep the props on, but I have the scars to prove that occasionally they will bite you if you are not following all the best practice. So let's plug this in. And there we have the Lua script. If I move the thing, you can kind of see. It's uh, showing me that we're not okay to fly. We don't have a GPS lock, but that's okay. So let's connect in iNav first of all. Uh, we can see the GPS is currently running, which is good. That's what you wanna see. You wanna see a blue GPS. In your model, it might be that you have to supply main power to it, which is, again is why I'd recommend take your props off. We can see at the moment it doesn't have a lock, which is fine, but we can see the messages are coming through. That means that all the wiring is okay and everything's happy. Great. So we'll go into receiver. And what we need to do is to make sure that as we move the throttle, the throttle in iNav moves. Now, some people uh, will reduce the amount of throws to uh, just uh, 1,000 to 2,000. That's a good idea. The trick is what we're looking for is all the middle channel positions to be 1500, as you can see here. And then as I move the stick to the top right hand corner, we want all the values to be absolutely maximum. That is what we're looking for. If it works that way, then we're in good shape. Let's also confirm that we've set up the modes properly. So if I go into the modes tab, we've got arming on channel five. So I flip my arming switch. We can see that that is working, that's the right one. The quadcopter quite rightly is telling me we're not ready to go yet, which is fab. And we can also see that in the mode switch, in the low position, I've got horizon, middle position, I've got nav position hold, and top position is actually nav waypoints. Although it should be nav return to home for the test. So I would do that. Uh, so those are the three things I'd have, horizon, nav position hold and nav return to hold. That will allow us to test everything. That is looking really good. The last thing we need to check is whether or not the fail safe works. So let me turn off the radio and on the computer, we're looking for fail safe mode to be initiated. Now we can see here uh, on the little display, it's starting to get some data. And as I move the model around, you can kind of see the virtual, hopefully that's been picked up. 
uh, the virtual cockpit. I find this is incredibly useful when you're out at the field. Right, okay, so with the Felsay stuff fixed, let's go to the field and just test the quad in those three modes, horizon, nav position hold, and nav return to home to make sure that everything is set up and going to work great. So now that final setup is done, I would recommend probably taking it out into your back garden and uh, not necessarily to fly it, but just to make sure that you can arm it and that it does get a GPS lock and everything is working okay before you tromp all the way to your local flying field. It's always disheartening to get there to find out that you've missed something and I'll put my hand up, I've absolutely done that in the past. So now we have the basic setup. First of all, what we're going to do is at the field, wait for a GPS lock. Again, the Lua script is going to tell me when that's the case, or you can just hold your goggles up and use the on-screen display and it will tell you when it has a GPS lock. If you try and arm and I'm not happy with something, it will absolutely tell you in the goggles. So it's important to have those running. Uh, but even though I'd recommend doing the initial flying line of sight so you can rescue it if something odd happens. Once it's got a GPS lock and it will arm, take off and hover around in Horizon. This is going to confirm that all the basics are done. Things like your props are on in the right way, your motors are going in the right direction, the controls on the radio are all the right way around, and also things like the accelerometer calibration that you did in the first video is spot on too. If it's drifting around uh, dramatically and all the middle channel values are at 1500, probably means your accelerometer calibration is out. Once you've got that all working, then it's time to go into nav position hold because that is going to be using the GPS and compass and the other sensors as well. So once you're in nav position hold, it should hold its position in the sky. Be aware that the way the throttle will react is different in nav position hold. It will feel a bit squishy because the maximum rise and sink rates are set in the advanced tuning tab. But for now, all we're interested in is can we put it in nav position hold and is it going to more or less hold its position in 3D space? Left to right, forward to backwards and up to down. Now it will wander about. This isn't going to be rock solid. It is going to wander up to meter and a half, two meters in any direction. So make sure it's far enough away and that you give this a good soak. This is testing that the GPS is happy. It's also testing whether the compass calibration is out. If the compass calibration is out, you are going to get that toilet bowling where it kind of flies in a circle and that circle will get more and more erratic. In this part be ready to go back into horizon mode because we know that works because that was the first thing we tested if it starts to misbehave if you start to see that weird behavior go back into horizon rerun your compass calibration the final step involves testing return to home and that involves flying a little bit further away if the quadcopter is very close to home location when you initiate return to home it will just descend and land so we need to fly it a little bit further away and then flick return to home. Again, I recommend doing this line of sight. I'd recommend making sure that you are ready to drop back straight into horizon mode to fly it back if it suddenly starts to shoot off in the wrong direction. What you should see is the quadcopter turn and head for home, fly back and then hover over the home location and then gently descend and land on the ground. If it does that, then you are in a really good place. We now know that the accelerometer calibration works, the compass calibration works, the GPS is happy, the main flight modes are okay. Now it might be like I just showed in this video where the performance of the quadcopter isn't fantastic and that's kind of expected. Things like low pass filters and stuff, particularly on these larger 7 inch models might need a bit of a tweak. But at this point, you now have iNav set up on your quadcopter and or working. So I would probably take it back at this point, plug it back into iNav and do a diff all and save that because that is your initial configuration. And from here on in, we can start to play with things like uh, tuning and filters and stuff like that to improve the way that it works. So join me in the next couple of videos where we'll look at that and also then look at how you do mission flying, autonomous flying with things like iNav on this multi-rotor.
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.